I remember many, many years ago, I've shared this at some instances, just picking up in serving God. This is well over a decade ago, many years ago. They brought a young lady to God's servant. And I was privileged to be there. They brought this lady from the United Kingdom. Looked all packaged. Nice, her sister brought her. And then she had explained the situation to God's servant. And God's servant said, now in the name of Jesus, just the mention of the name of Jesus, everything changed. From the voice of a lady, it became masculine. Mm. So at that time, I needed to advise myself. Because things began to change. She began to manifest. Voice was changing. Sound. Nya, nya. So I moved behind God's servant for security reasons. And I stayed behind God's servant. He was speaking with authority and he said, even your master, the devil, recognizes his voice. I said, Amen. I stayed behind him because at such times, things can be flying anyhow. This is many, many years ago. So he was commanding the demons, get up! So I was shouting, amen, from behind. Long story short, the lady was healed. Many years, many, many years after, I was privileged to pastor in one of our churches outside the country. And one of the youths, a young lady, said to me, Pastor, my fiance will be coming to church this Sunday. I want to introduce him to you. I said, fine, bring him. So he came to church. And from where I stood preaching, he looked different. He had this height of a basketballer. Tall, hefty, cute guy. <laughs> Amen. I know some of you will smile. Cute guy. And then after the service, she brought him with so much pride. Pastor, my fiance, I was talking to you about I, I prayed. I said, praise the Lord. Come in. How are you? Then I said, do you mind if we pray? Let me just pray for both of you. She said, yes, yes, yes. And I said, now, Father, in the name of Jesus, all of a sudden, something happened. Manifestation started. All my protocol, security, they closed the office door. Do you understand what I just said? They are supposed to be guiding the pastor. <laughs> shielding the pastor from assault. The moment they saw the young man started manifesting, they just closed the door. So it was me, the lady, and the fiance in the office. To your tent, O Israel. And it began to manifest. But there was no papa to run behind at that time. And the level of light had increased to a certain degree. So I began to speak by the word of the Lord. He began to vomit certain substance. And he vomited. And I turned to look for the fiancé. She was at the extreme end of the office. Arrested by the wall. Like this. Well, I don't know if that relationship continued. <laughs> the only recognized authority in the world of darkness is light it's light it's light not grammar not looks when the seven sons of Scapha so Paul display power and authority. Say so we like this. We like the dominion Paul has over the forces of darkness. We like this. We will do like Paul. And unfortunately, they looked for a wrong candidate. And they saw a demon possessed person. And they carried the person and said, We adore you by Jesus. Whom Paul preaches. We don't know him. We don't carry the light Paul carries. But we like the miracle Paul performs. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We have heard Paul speak it. And what happened? 
And the evil spirit got angry. You know, demons too can get angry. And they said, Jesus, I know. He's a carrier of light. He's light personified. John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 5. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you seven vagabonds? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. Over one man against seven well-built men. Overcame them. Prevailed against them. And so that they fled out of the house. How? Naked and wounded. May that not be your testimony. They came to cast out devils. They were casted out. Why? They carried no light. So they had no authority. But upon your leaving this mountain, you are living here enlightened. You become a light bearer from this mountain. Sometimes, when darkness humbles the proud, they now come to their senses. Some years ago, a young man was in service. And then an instruction came to pray. We were praying against evil news, just like the young lady testified. Praying that there must be no negative news or experience in our families. And there was this man that sat down, that stood in front. Others were praying. Ah, gah, gah, gah. He just stood with his hand in his pocket. I was looking at everybody. You know there are people like that in church? You are praying, they just pose like uncles and aunties of God. And he paused right in front. Others were praying. On a Sunday morning, praying. We forbid evil by the word of the Lord. No, he just stood there, posing. Long story short, the next morning, he was running to church. When he arrived, they said, what's going on? Pastor, pastor, they just called me. My mother, my mother. And the picture of the proud one that stood in front was painted. But adventure, that word was for him. But the grip of pride made him feel too big to stand before God to avert the evil that was impending. You want to assess light in this kingdom. You want to assess revelation. God will only unveil his secrets to the humble. The meek will he teach his ways. The meek will he guide in judgment. Don't start the day without starting with his word. Don't begin the day without starting with his word. Hearing from God first will settle the rest of the day. So many of us are consumed by so many things. And that has kept many of us stranded in our walk with God. If you want to enjoy the best of God, make sure that you settle down with his word. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now listen to me. We heard it in the, in the second teaching. If you are going to have dominion in this adventure, you will need the light of the word. And to have the light of the word, you must settle down with the word. You must settle down. You don't know the confrontations and battles you are going to be met with in the adventure of life. And you discover that it's the weapons you have built inside of you that give you access to dominate in the adventure of life. Listen to me. The word of God is the greatest weapon that you and I can have in making the most of our adventure on the earth. Every department of your life can be settled by the word of God when you settle with it. Settle down with God's word and you will settle your destiny. Settle down with God's word and you will settle your destiny. Settle down. God, someone was saying yesterday, very powerfully in our midst here, he was telling us, he said, look, revelation is greater than vision. It's more potent, it's more powerful. You don't know what you'll be confronted with, but if you have revelation, you are able to dominate the various contentions of life. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's so important. And it's so vital. I remember when I was to get married and I'd met my wife. And one day my wife came to meet me. We're in courtship then. And she came and said, well, there's something I need to tell you. I said, what's it? And she said, well, as a little girl, she went to the hospital and she was diagnosed with a condition. And she was told that she's not likely to have children. I said, that's not a problem. We have children too. One boy, one girl. She thought I didn't understand what she was saying. So she brought it up again. They told me this. I said, that's not a problem. We have two, a boy, a girl. 
That's what I know. And why do I know that? Because the word of God is clear. He said, there shall not one be barren among you, male or female. The doctor told you that, but the one who created doc the doctor told us this. There shall not be one, male or female, barren among you. You see, if you are not settled with the word of God, you will have yourself confronted and defeated in the battles of life. In fact, the truth is the devil will confuse you. When you are not settled in God's word, the devil will confuse you. And that's why it becomes important for us to learn to build ourselves up. I make it a practice in my life every single day. The first thing I receive, the first thing I read, not a text message, not a phone call, not anything else, but first of all, is the word of God. I must drink it in because it has been the greatest advantage in my adventure. It has been what has settled me from every form of confusion. I remember before I got married, an elderly woman came to me, very spiritual looking. And she said to me, I need to talk to you. I said, what is it? She said, listen, um, I know that there is somebody that you are supposed to, you, you, you want to get married to. But the Lord has said to me that you are not to marry that person. That this other person is the one who you are to marry. And she looked at me and said, you know, the Bible says that, you know, the Lord will do nothing until he reveals it unto his servants, the prophet. When she finished talking, I said, sit down, ma. She sat down. I said, listen, what you are saying is 100% anti-scriptural. Because the Bible says, he that findeth a wife, not he they find a wife for, has found a good thing. Is somebody getting it now? If you are not settled with God's word, people will confuse you in the journey of life. Somebody will look at you, jump up and down, jump up and down, jump up and down and say, look, you are supposed to go into fishing business. What do you know about water? <laughs> now listen to me. It is important for us to understand that the word of God must become our obsession. It must become our addiction. If you are not settled with the word, you will become unsettled in the journey of life. So sit down with the word. Sit down. Settle down with the world so that you don't become a victim in the adventure of life. Listen, if you don't know the word of God in and out, the devil will confuse you. You know, even when Satan came to Jesus, what was he quoting? The Bible. Matthew chapter 4, read it very well. He began to quote the scriptures. He was giving Jesus various scriptures, trying to bring confusion. But because Jesus was the word in motion, he was able to arrest the confusion. By the instrumentality of the world. I see grace coming upon each one of us afresh for a unique hunger and thirst for the word of God. Yeah.